Hello, and welcome to another episode of our Frequently Asked Question series. In this week's episode, we'll be talking about a variety of different questions from video compression to MVR channels. So, let's get started with question number one. What is H.265 Plus, Zipstream and Smartstream, and why are they important to my IP cameras? Simple, all of the terms listed are types of video compression. Video compression is used to reduce the file size of your recording, whilst maintaining as much of the original image resolution as possible. The compression is usually done by something called a codec. These codecs, like the ones listed in the question, are often built into the camera to allow you to compress as you record. Now, compression is crucial to IP cameras for two very simple reasons, storage and bandwidth. Storage is integral to IP cameras. Without it, there'll be no reason for having cameras. But storage is costly, and so we have to make the most of it. So imagine, for example, trying to record four 8 megapixel cameras at 20 frames per second with no video compression. We'll be talking about some huge storage usage. This is where the codecs come in. They reduce the file size and save you a ton of space. And with each new generation of codec, this space saving gets better. For example, a system using around 10 terabytes of storage with the older H.264 codec could switch to the newer H.265 Plus codec and compress the same amount of data into only two terabytes of storage. Bandwidth usage is also improved by compression, which is really important because once your system is connected to your network, it will be using a chunk of your bandwidth speed for as long as it's switched on. And so the smaller the amount of bandwidth each camera uses, the better. This is where the codecs come in as they reduce that usage. For example, an 8 megapixel 4K camera using the latest H.265 Plus codec can transmit data using only 3 to 4 megabits per second, depending on the frame rate, which is the same as a 2 megapixel camera using the standard H.264 codec. Question 2. If the location I plan to install my IP cameras doesn't have any easily accessible network ports, can I still use IP cameras? Now, this is an interesting question, as it isn't one we get asked a lot, but it is the reason that a lot of people steer away from using IP cameras. And it shouldn't be the case, because in actual fact you can use network cameras without direct access to network ports. All you need are main sockets close to your cameras and a device called a power line. The power line is a very simple solution to a tricky problem. By allowing you to transmit data across any mains power circuit, you can turn any mains plug socket on the same circuit into a network port. Now, there are many options to choose from when it comes to Powerline products, but on our webshop, we stock the TP-Link range that come with a variety of different features, some even including wireless connection. This, combined with its ability to transmit data up to 300 meters between each device, makes the Powerline devices incredibly versatile for almost every tricky camera setup. It will even transmit data at speeds of up to 2,000 megabits per second for certain models, which means that you can plug a switch into your Powerline device and connect multiple cameras to a single mains connection. The only disadvantage of Powerline is that it doesn't work like PoE. Once your data leaves the Powerline device, it is only a network data signal. But most of the Powerline kits feature at least one device with a power outlet built in, meaning that the original outlet is still usable even when the Powerline device is plugged in. This means that you can plug a PoE injector in after the fact or just run a DC power supply straight to the camera from the power outlet. Question number three. The MVR I bought has 32 channels but only 16 physical ports. Can I still connect up to 32 cameras to my MVR? What we always say when this question comes up is look at the number of channels first, not the number of ports. There's a simple reason for this. Ports are the physical connection points on the back of the MVR whereas channels are the number of devices that the software inside the MVR is designed to manage. And because the physical ports define the size of the MVR, once we exceed 16 channels, we stop having the same number of ports to channels as to keep the MVR to a reasonable size for most setups. So using the example from the question, if you have a 32 channel MVR, it's more than likely only going to have 16 physical ports at most. And in some cases with very large professional MVRs, they will only have a small number of physical ports. So to get access to the rest of the channels, you will have to plug a multi-port switch directly into the MVR, or as MVRs are network devices, you can scan the network it's on and record any cameras it finds on that network. Thank you for watching and subscribing. If you haven't subscribed already, please do by clicking here. Check the description below for links to our Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. Follow the link here for our web shop. And if you want more videos like this, check out the playlist up here. Thank you again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.